My name is Laura Priggy and I am going to talk to you today about the GSI Suite Audiometric Data Management Software and how to customize your reports. If you open your GSI Suite, you will notice that all of your data has transferred into the software from your AudioStar Pro, TimStar, um, your GSI 39, and now we need to figure out how to customize the report so that it looks like the way you want it to look. So to customize your report, you will go to the Configure icon, you will go to Templates, and then you will go to Manage the Templates. When you press Manage, it's going to pull up a window called the Template Manager. There are three sections in the Template Manager. The first one is the Locked section. This is full of templates that have been um, defined and locked. They are not changeable, uh, and they have been uh, provided by Grayson Stadler. You then have a section called User Defined. These are these are reports or, or templates that you have customized yourselves, and then you also have a favorite section where you can define your favorite man or your favorite templates. With a locked report, you may select one that looks like it's going to suit your needs uh, for the most part, and you can actually copy and rename that and customize it for your uh, specific needs. So you select a report, you press the copy button. I'm going to select this one, I'm going to press copy, and that is going to place a copy of this report into the user defined section. From that point you can rename your uh, report that you've just copied, so I'm going to call it Laura's report, and press enter. It will then be um, placed into your user defined section and you can double click on that and modify it from there. When you double click on a, a user defined or, or an editable report template, it will bring up the template editor sheet or page that looks just like this. In the template editor, you have all of the components that were on that copied template, and then you also have some additional information. Over here on the left side of the screen, this is where you're going to find your components that you would like to include in your report. The general section is general information that is pulled from the GSI suite, so the facility, logo, graphics, patient information, all of those things are pulled over from the GSI suite. The audiometry section, these uh, components are all pulled over from the information received from the AudioStar Pro or the audiometry module of the GSI 39. And then from the tympanometry section, those components are all pulled from information that is uh, sent from the TimpStar or from the GSI 39. So you can modify the report that you have uh, copied and edited, or you can create a new report. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new report um, just to, to demonstrate the ease of which you can pull in information. So in my report, I need to have some facility information. So I'm going to take this first facility information, click on it, and drag it over to my report. You can see that it's kind of small, but I can adjust that. I can change those things around. I can right click and go to properties, and that will open up a general properties window. Additionally, I can double click on this component and it will pull up that same general properties window. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uncheck where it says show labels. That's just going to get rid of some of this extra uh, information that I don't need. It doesn't have to say facility name Laura's Hearing Center. I, I can figure out that the facility name is Laura's Hearing Center without that label. So I'm gonna uncheck the show labels. The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the font. I prefer a different font than this, so I'm gonna go down here, change the font. I'm gonna change the font size to maybe 15. And then I'm going to evaluate what facility information I actually need on my report. I do not have an address to, so I'm going to remove that. The country, I don't need to keep that on there. I'm going to take away my phone number and my fax, or my uh, web address and my fax and my email because I don't need those. They're on my logo. And then I'm going to press OK, and you can see here in my facility box that it has um, changed that around based on what properties I took out or added. You can resize any of these components just like a picture in a word program, so I can just click on one of those corners until I get the arrows and resize as needed. The next thing I'm going to pull over is my patient information, so I'm going to click on that and drag it over here to my report. I have um, gotten that where I want it, but I need to adjust those general properties, so I'm going to go double click create general properties. I'm going to uncheck show labels. I do want to keep my name. Um, I do want to keep the ID number, the gender, um, I don't need the age, so I'm going to take that out there and I'm going to just press OK and you can see that I have that information. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this font consistent with my facility font. So 
I'm going to change that font in the font size and press OK. So now I have a consistent patient information and facility information. And lastly, I need my logo. So I'm going to drag that over here, place it right in the middle, make it into a picture and make it a little bit bigger. So that's how I would like the top of my, uh, my report to be every single time. Now I'm going to get into the rest of my uh, data. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to grab my audiogram graph and I'm going to place it on my report. It will show up there and again just like the facility information and the patient information and the logo when you select this component it turns into a picture if you will and you can resize that as big or as little as you want. Additionally I can choose which components I want to be included in this graphic and which ones I, I don't want included by double clicking or pressing the right click and selecting properties. So for this one, I, for this audiogram, I am going to use the combined audiogram. I want my audiogram graph. Um, I don't want my masking table at the bottom, so I'm going to uncheck that one. Um, I'm going to uncheck Stenger, and then I'm going to press OK. So now I have just a plain old audiogram graph. I do need to include my masking table at some point, so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller here. And I'm going to go back here and drag over another audiogram graph, click on the properties, uncheck the graph and all of the other information that I had on my uh, original audiogram and now I just have that masking table. I can resize it to be as small or as large as I want and then I can reposition it by clicking it and dragging it so I can just maybe put it right there. There. Now I want to have a speech table. I do minimum speech testing in my, uh, in my facility, so I'm going to bring over my speech table here. I would like a border around that, so I'm going to go to the toggle border and it's going to make that a nice border for me. I'm now going to go to the properties where I can see this is right, left, or combined. I'm going to combine those results there. I do want the ear, the test type, signal, word list, aided, hearing level, so I'm going to keep all those things there. And I typically just do a couple uh, word lists with each ear, so I'm going to resize that to be about that size. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag over my comments. So I'm going to bring my comments over here. I'm going to double click that. I can't tell what it is, so I'm going to display the header on that, and I'm going to call it um, report, or you can change it however you want. I'm really going to leave it comments. And I'm going to press OK. <clears throat> I don't like the way that component looks, so I'm going to select it and I'm going to press delete on my actual um, keyboard. I'm going to move my speech information right under my audiogram and then I'm going to expand my comments over here like this. Now I would like to put a tympanometry graph on there, so I'm going to drag that over and place it right next to my audiogram and I'm going to double click and see what my properties are. This is the right ear, it's 226 hertz. I want the tympanometry, I want the norm, normative curve, and all the rest of the stuff will be just fine too. I need another one for the left ear, so I'm going to drag that over here. It doesn't quite fit on the page, so I'm going to have to resize those a little bit. Resize this one, there we go. I'm going to make this a left ear by right clicking, going to left. Perfect. Now, I want my tympanometry graphs to be the same size, so I can click on one, press down the control key, and click on the other, and it selects both of them. And up here, I have a lot of different options for aligning to make, make it very easy. So I clicked on align the tops, and now I'm going to click make the same size. So now my tympanometry graphs are the same size. Now I'm going to select those two and my audiogram and make the tops uh, line up. Now I also do the BKB sin and the quick sin <clears throat> with nearly every one of my patients, so I'm going to drag over my quick sin and my BKB sin information. Again, I can um, go to the properties here. I have the display header. I have the um, the different options for the binaural for the group, and I can make that a little bit larger so it is easy to see. I'm going to do the same thing with my BKB sin. I'm going to display that header. I'm going to make this binaural and I'm going to show both groups. So now I have those two evaluations available there. You can see now I can do a lot of different things. I, since I have some room left over, I'm going to copy my speech table and paste another one right next to it. 
move it up there. I'm going to go to the properties and make this one a left ear. And then I'm going to go to the properties over here and make this one a right ear. Okay. I'm going to hit control and select both of them to make the tops the same, to make them the same size. And then I'm going to move them up just a little bit so we have a little extra room there. Now when you have things arranged the way that you think that you'd like them, you can go to the button on the top called View Report. When you press View Report, it will pull up a PDF of how the report will look when you save it, when you transfer it, and it will also drag over the information that you already have saved inside your GSI suite with that particular patient so you can actually see um, the way it's going to look. And then now we're in Adobe so you can see it's, it's exactly just like a, a PDF reader. When I am satisfied with the way that my report looks, I would change the quick send maybe a little bit there, but when I'm ready and I'm satisfied with the way my report looks, I'm going to press save, save the template, and I'm going to save the template um, under a name that I'll remember. So we'll call this adult testing typical, and press OK. <clears throat> It will save that report and then I will get some more options. Now, because I've spent the time making my report the way most of my referral sources want to see it, I'm going to make that the default report. I'm also going to add it to my favorites. So now when I close and I look at my template manager window, under user defined I have my adult testing typical and some other reports I've done. Under my favorites I have the one adult testing typical that I just recorded it is the default, which means checkmark and a favorite. When you close the configuration screen, please always press apply and then OK. Now, every time I'm ready to save or view or print or save to a file my report, I can use the drop down menu and it will list all of my favorite reports there and my default will have the checkmark. If I just press view or just press save, it will show or save the default uh, report that you have saved. If you have any questions about the customizing of your reports, please don't hesitate to call or email Grayson Stadler. Visit our website for more information, www.grayson-stadler.com. And thank you very much.